It's creeping. Yeah, I usually just give this a little bit of time to <clears throat> sink in before I move on. <laughs> Ooh, just like right in the back of the throat. <laughs> What's up? I'm Chase Finley, and for the Finley Mind Wedding, this is Love Wings, the show with hot wings and an even hotter wife. Uh, my guest on the show today is Natalia Finley. Welcome to the show, Natalia. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling about today? I'm nervous. I'm already sweating. Yeah. But i um, excited. You ready to eat some wings? Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so, uh, tradition on the show is for us to kind of go from one to ten. Um, we obviously start with the Hot Ones classic hot sauce. Um, so let's dive right in. Nice. So every, uh, every, uh, girl has a dream of their wedding. So when you were a we little girl. Huh. What did you envision your wedding to be? I'm sure a castle, like every Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I grew up going to Yosemite, which you know, but uh, I absolutely love being in the trees. It's like its own cathedral, mm -hmm. cathedral of nature. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I always knew I wanted to get married amongst the trees. Okay. And, uh, happy we're doing that. And uh, does our current venue kind of fit into that kind of thought that you had yeah, about your wedding? It's completely outdoors. Yeah. All of our family's going to be together. In Big one. Bear. Yeah, in Big Bear, California. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited. I think luckily this will be the first time that we can uh, safely get together since the pandemic started. And so um, it'll be nice to have our entire families together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on to our second wing. How are you doing after the first one, by the way? Fine. That one's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, is the hot and saucy garlic and pepperoncini. That one's more sweet. I'm gonna eat more of these because I know I'll only be able to take a bite of the last ones. <laughs> Smart. Um, so continuing with the theme of uh, the beginning, I know that I've told the story of how we met a hundred times, but uh, why don't you tell us about what your first impression was of me? The very first time we met? Yeah. So you know this about me, but sometimes I'm very I focused, right? So if I have a plan or something to do, I'm heading straight for it. And so that day I was working at Disneyland and I was uh, on a, about to be on a VIP tour and I probably had about 10 minutes before I was supposed to meet my guests and I had a friend and I was going to go visit him in an office, the office where we typically check in as tour guides and so I walk in and I know where he's sitting so I'm going directly to his desk but right as I walk into the office I see this guy that I've never seen before completely lean all the way back and just like <laughs> notice me walk in. So I noticed that but I just didn't have time. So I went straight to my friend um, and had a conversation with him. And of course you walk on over and introduce yourself and me being the focused me just turned and said, hi, and then continued on. <laughs> Didn't know that that was going to be the love of my life. And um, yeah, I'm happy you stood up and introduced yourself. From my perspective, I've never really been the type that would do something like that. I never really, you know, walk up to a girl and just introduce himself immediately, but I was obviously attracted to you. Did you kind of feel like I had a confidence about me or was oh, it more cocky? Definitely. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't really remember, but I definitely noticed that you stood up and it was, uh, that's why it stood out to me because we didn't speak again until maybe three, three months later. And so the fact that that interaction stood out to me, definitely you made an impression. Cool. <laughs> All right, moving on uh, to wing three. Uh, this is Mark's Barbados style hot wing. Feel on the kick on this one. Yeah, this is traditionally when our guests start to 
kind of get into the uh, hotness of the wings. So that's a hotness that you want to put just to feel the kick, but you can still feel your tongue. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of continuing with that with that theme of going from the beginning to uh, kind of moving forward. Now let's fast forward to you're in the office. Um, you have uh, kind of a interesting situation where you're in training and uh, there's a few different uh, desks to choose from. So why don't you kind of tell me about that, that thought process that you went through in choosing what desks to go to in that office and um, maybe even uh, talk about, you know, one of my groomsmen that, that was there at that time too. Yeah. So this office had a lot of old tour guides, right? Previous tour guides, let's say. And so there were three desks open and I was the first of the three people joining the team uh, to be trained. And so I got first pick. I was happy about that. So I noticed that there was one that was kind of smushed in between two other desks. I definitely didn't want that one. Sorry, Jeannie. Uh, <laughs> and then I, there was another one that I just, I don't, I didn't really, I didn't know the person that I was sitting next to, but I did know the gentleman that would have been sit seated, seated to my right which is Mike Burns, lovely Mike Burns. And I knew he was a funny, cool guy. And then I didn't know you, but I thought, you know, that is the biggest desk in the office. And so mm -hmm. I'm gonna be selfish and take the biggest desk. And I'm sitting in between two guys that are friends. And so, hey, I think it'll be a good time. But um, sitting next to Mike Burns, love the guy, but uh, I learned something very important. You <laughs> cannot by any means ever smack your gum next to Mike Burns. <laughs> He is the nicest guy until you smack your gum and he turns around and very distinctly says, can you not? <laughs> and that uh, is what I learned. Oh, my buddy. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll keep moving on forward to uh, wing number four, the Los Calientes. All right. I would say that's about my comfort level. Maybe I, I might like the next one, but we're getting to the tingling lips. Starting to time. kick up a little bit, right? Tingling, tingling lips. lips. <laughs> so throughout our relationship, we've uh, obviously been very, very fortunate to travel many different places, have so many different, experience, different experiences um, throughout the world. Um, why don't you kind of talk to me about the time that you um, what what um, one place internationally that we've gone to kind of sticks out in your mind as a, as your favorite memory that you've ever had? That's a hard one. I think because our relationship was so new, um, when we traveled to Paris. Um, so for those that don't know, uh, I travel for work, and so Chase uh, came to uh, meet me at the end of my summer long uh, commitment there. And so he came to meet me in Spain and uh, I surprised him with a like two night stay in Paris. And so we went, he had never actually been to Europe. And so um, it was nice to have you not only go to Spain, but then also go um, to Paris. And so we did everything that you would typically do tourist right wise, or at least that we could fit in in that day. But the one thing you did get to choose or not get, I sound awful, get to choose. <laughs> but like the one thing you were in charge of planning was dinner. Um, and so you chose this restaurant and I, I, I hope we can go back to it at some point, but it was super small. I think it had maybe like six tables inside, um, but we were super late as we always are when you're traveling with me. <laughs> um, but you managed to speak to uh, the owner and they got us a little table just outside. And it wasn't anything like you weren't overlooking anything like, um, you know, the river or anything like that, but behind you was the beautiful Eiffel Tower. And so I think just that iconic moment of us having dinner, having that amazing souffle, um, and then the Eiffel Tower, and then it lighting up at night. I think that was just kind of what, such a very special moment because it was one of our very first like romantic dinners. And I mean, what better place to have it than Paris? Absolutely. Yeah, I think from, I, from my point of view, uh, you know, we, I think we went on that vacation like pretty short like into our relationship. Three or four uh, months, yeah. yeah. So I was kind of still on that uh, kind of high alert, like, oh, am I doing everything perfectly? And um, I really feel like that dinner, I was, I had a lot writing on it because I really wanted to impress you. I wanted to look like I had actually done some, some research. And um, yeah, by the time we got there, I, uh, we obviously we sat down and 
had the Eiffel Tower behind us. So I was like, yeah, I think I think I did all right. <laughs> um, great. And uh, how are you feeling so far? I'm good. Like, I'm ready for the next deep? one. Great. Uh, so moving on to number five, we're getting to the halfway point here. This is the Hellfire Hot mm. Sauce. I like it. I like this one. So again, changing pace a little bit. I'd love to kind of talk to you about how we're... Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I feel it. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> Careful around the eyes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of changing pace a little bit. Um, why don't we start to kind of talk about our bridal party a little bit? So um, uh, you obviously have uh, two maid of honors. Um, mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me about the, your two maid of honors? So it is my sister, mm -hmm. my only sister, my elder sister. She. Um, What's her name? April. Mm -hmm. um, or like my dad likes to say, Abril Sol Nunez. <laughs> um, She's great. I have obviously always taken her lead on everything and I love her. She's great. And I'm really happy that she's gonna, she lives in Texas now, you know, mm -hmm. um, but she's making it all the way out. And so I'm happy she's gonna be with us for that, uh, the moment, be standing by us. And then the other one is my crazy little friend, Jess. Um, <laughs> she's, she actually, um, so we met in high school um, and it's always been like a little unit of three, her, Alicia and I. And, um, but Jess and I started getting a lot more close, um, when she would come visit me when we were traveling. Mm -hmm. And so we would go on these adventures again. She would, you know, stay for like a week. And I mean, I have to apologize to Jess. I have made her run to more subways than <laughs> any other person. Um, no, but she's great. And she's the perfect travel partner aside from you. Um, and so, yeah, we still have another place to go because COVID kind of took that last, that fifth year we were going to travel together. So that's something that we have to do, but yeah. Something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you? What about your best man? Tristan. Yeah. Well, um, I obviously love him. Um, he, uh, he's been my best friend for, uh, since we were, uh, young, uh, in fifth grade, I, I met him and, uh, you, you know this, I had a mullet at the time, which is kind of <laughs> crazy. Um, Tristan was one of the only ones that kind of looked past that um, little uh, situation that I had going on there and, uh, and befriended me. But um, that was actually the next uh, set of questions was uh, my groomsmen. I wanted you to go through each one and tell me your first impression of each of them. So why don't we go ahead and start on your first impression of my best man, Tristan. We're gonna go there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tristan? I yeah. love Tristan. God, when, when was the first time that I met Tristan? I don't know that I remember the very first time. I just know that I've always had such a great impression with him. Like, I think when people meet you, they think, oh, that's a nice guy. And then they meet Tristan and it's like, oh, that's a nicer guy. Not, no offense to you, but like, he's nice. But then they meet Michael Mayer and it's like, well, the nicest, you know? And so I think um, they're just really genuine guys. Um, I already spoke about Mike Burns and I give him a hard time, but he truly is. I think the friendships that you have are um, so solid. You know, the fact that you guys have been friends for years and it's that type of friendship that you guys will be there through anything, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you have Eric, which is a funny story. Um, uh, so uh, I think the first time I met Eric, we had gone to dinner, but yeah. anyway, so uh, he was one of the last ones that I met. Um, but I think he's awesome as well. Like I really enjoy spending time with him. He's funny. I think he's, he's definitely more opinionated than the other ones, but in a good way. Like he, uh, <laughs> he is very lively and I wish we got to hang out with him more often, but yeah. we're excited that he is coming. Uh -huh. Um, and then Grant. Grant is the sweetest as well. Um, I can't, I mean, in the years that I've known him, he's mm -hmm. grown like five feet. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, it's interesting to know that you have a little brother that's 12 years younger, but that you guys are still uh, as close as you can be. And um, I think it's great. I think that you're a big role model for him. And it's nice to see where his path is going because it's funny, he has very different interests, just like my sister and I, we're night and day. Um, but it works, you know, he is making something of himself and I can't wait to see where that leads. Awesome. All right, moving on. We're past the halfway point now. Uh, we are looking at uh, the High River Sauces Tears of the Sun 
private reserve hot sauce. I'm already sweating. It might, might seem like it's okay, but like I am <laughs> definitely sweating. Gotta keep it moving. These are good. I'm starting to think I didn't put enough sauce on these things. <laughs> yeah, I think after we a while. Are we not going for the water? We um, it's up to you. All right, I'll try and stick it out. <laughs> I, I think after a while, the uh, kind of heat just coats the tongue, so you uh, you really can't uh, really taste anything anymore. But uh, <laughs> uh, to continue on with our bridal party, um, <laughs> uh, why don't you tell me about Munch? Um, at least, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, she has a nickname Munch, and that comes from her brother since she was little. But um, I met her, funny story, um, her and I had the same freshman English class. And uh, she turns to me and she goes, hey, I think my brother is dating your sister. <laughs> <laughs> and so her brother Steve was a senior, April was a junior, and yeah, they were dating. Sorry, mom. Um, <laughs> And uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and so her and I just became friends, and then we've just always vibed. We've always she's actually the one that I started Disney with, which I think is hilarious. We thought she and she came up to me actually. She had an email uh, for this job fair at Disney, and she's just like, hey, she's like, let's go work at Disneyland. It was our senior year, and she's like, maybe we can be princesses. And I was like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad we got a lot of firsts together, and she's a great one. Great. And we're moving on with number seven. Uh, this is when we really start to get into the danger zone. Uh, we're at the Torchbearer Sauces Honey Badger Honey Mustard Sauce. <laughs> You know, we've uh, we've taken a lot of thought into the order of these sauces. We want to kind of allow it to you to ease your way in, <laughs> but steadily get a little bit hotter as we go on. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why don't you tell me about the uh... yeah. the most um, kind of interesting. Uh, thing that's happened during our uh, wedding planning process for you. You mean other than a world pandemic that <laughs> stops everything? <laughs> wedding planning. Um, um, sorry, I'm just trying to focus here. I think I'm gonna change napkins so I can clear the tears in my eyes. Careful around the eyes. Yeah. Like I said before, we just don't want you to cry too much. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's like, I just can't stop sweating. Um, I feel like I'm talking, kind of just vibrating. Um, I mean, that happens. Yeah, the pandemic definitely threw us for a loop. It was, we were, I want to say about just about 50 days away from our wedding. Um, and all of a sudden everything started shutting down. It was just such a scary time, you know? Uh, we didn't know what was happening. Right. Yeah. And so we thought, oh, this is going to last a month, you know, two <laughs> months maybe. And then I know making the decision, it was just hard to like postpone because everything was paid for. Everything was, you know, set aside. And so, whew, um, I think that's probably what was the hardest, but, um, yeah, we postponed to October and then realized stuff was not getting better, uh, by then. And so luckily postponing a full year and it looks like it's going to happen. Hopefully. So yeah, we've been very fortunate on that end, but um, I will say it's been fantastic with the vendors that we've had and just our family and our support. Everyone has been so understanding, you know, it's out of our hands, but you know, I'm excited for the people that are going to be there to support us. <sighs> All right. right. 
<clears throat> We've uh, before we actually move on to the next wing, I'd love to kind of sprinkle in the rest of your uh, bridesmaids. So uh, why don't you tell me about uh, Angelica? <laughs> <laughs> An itty guy, I love her. She, um, we met in kindergarten, and we wow. fought about who was our friend Raquel's best friend. Oh. I thought I was Raquel's best friend. She thought she was Raquel's best friend. Turns out we were each other's best friend. Uh -huh. um, so her and I grew up together. We went to elementary school and middle school together, at separate high schools, but then um, came back in uh, college. And yeah, she's just amazing. She will give you the shirt off her back and has done that for me multiple times. Um, but no, she really is. And she's an amazing cook and she's an amazing bartender. And there's really nothing that woman can't do. So she studies, she goes to work full time. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. All right. Now we get serious. We're at the eighth wing. Um, we've had a few, uh, a few of our previous uh, guests on the show bow out at this point. This is uh, time for Da Bomb Evolution. Yeah, I usually just give this a little bit of time to <laughs> sink in before I move on. <laughs> Ooh, she's like right in the back of the throat. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so uh, I think we uh, are moving on to our next. Um... DJ was right. Battery is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to your. Uh, that made it worse. <laughs> next. Bridesmaid, why don't you uh, tell me about uh, little Alex? Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Woo! Nope. Um, <laughs> Not there yet. You do, don't forget, you do have uh, your safety blanket of the water. Oh, no, see, but the way that you framed it, safety blanket. It's okay. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Like involuntarily crying, like I can't control it. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is a reaction that we get sometimes. Okay, 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 okay. Now I'm going for the water. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's much better. Okay. <sighs> All right, Alex, <laughs> my sweet little she -um we met in college. My eyebrows sweating? Is that a thing? <laughs> it's uh, pretty well saturated. How are you not phased? <laughs> you know, I've, I've done this um, countless number of times. I think this is actually my first time doing the show, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you build tolerance over time. I mean, I've definitely, um, <laughs> uh, What's the word that I'm looking for? I simulated myself into the Mexican culture and oh. your your oh your tias and your your Hair's mom and up. everybody has kind of tried to serve me up and, and especially your your grandma, Momchella, has hit me with some really spicy things. So this kind of put me through the gauntlet for for this situation. Well, I've been going through Where it all my go? life and it should not put me it should not prepare me. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm crying. Wow. <laughs> Right. So, so Alex. Alex. Tell me Sorry. about her. I should have talked about her sooner. <laughs> um, so we met in college, and um, it, I was my last year at sorority. Tradition is that you get a little sister that you mentor, and so as seniors, you typically don't get one because you're on your way out, and you know you want them to have that relationship throughout. <laughs> and so. We go to this retreat. I wasn't planning on getting a little sister, but her and I, we ended up driving together. And I was like, this girl is like the cutest. I am like, I feel like I just worked <laughs> no. out. I'm sweating so bad. You still look beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, we just like hit it off. Honestly, it was like love at first sight, you know, like she and I just like, you like this, I like this. And she just like everything she stood for and still stands for. 
we just meshed so, so well. And so the fact that we always lived in city, cities that were far apart, you're laughing. <laughs> Is it like... I'm just, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to enjoy your uh, oh, sorry. description of the It's very hard for me to enjoy anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, she's just, she's great. And I'm really happy that, you know, we've created this friendship over the years. And we went to Hawaii together. She lived in Hawaii for a time. And it was one of my favorite trips to date. And so she's my little hiking buddy. We have to to do more, but we've had some some really fun times. Yeah. I don't even want to go to the next ones. <laughs> well, I'll be honest. Usually, <coughs> once you get past the bomb, if you can make it past the bomb, you've got pretty smooth sailing the rest of the way. Uh, so we're moving on to our uh, second to last one. Uh, this is another one of the Hot Ones series, uh, The Eye of the Scorpion the Mud Sauce. So obviously, every great host is humble. Hmm. They like to throw it to the uh, to the guest, um, but I'm gonna kind of take a step back from that. Ask you, uh, what's your uh, what's your favorite thing about me? Oh man, everything. That one's okay. Or should I just buy? Again, like I said, Famous once you get past the the bomb. Um. I just love. It's so hard to choose. Just one thing. Um, well, feel free to. No. Say <laughs> <laughs> um, I love your your kindness. I love your confidence. I um, love the fact that you love rap. <laughs> it's not uh, you what you think of immediately that you um, when you get to know you. So you're saying when you first saw me. No, I definitely didn't take you for someone that was like a big hip hop person. Hip -hop. But, but yeah, hippity hop. <laughs> um, yeah, that was not too bad. Maybe because my mouth is just raw. Mm -hmm. um, um, no, I just love the way you love. I think whenever you uh, allow someone into your inner circle, you are just the most um, unique, loving, giving person. And um, I definitely like I'm selfish in the fact that like I feel like I want it all obviously you know, the whole world deserves your love but um, another thing too that I know doesn't get said as often is I love how you are not afraid to show love especially to other men to like your friends I think that I love hearing you say I love you I love hearing you like openly without you know anything else that goes on in the world you're just very you know just confident and true to yourself and sexy thank you <laughs> um yeah and uh i obviously to kind of elaborate on you i there's so many things that i love about you the the fact that you love to travel the fact that you, the type of love that you give me um i think that you have showered me with love since we first uh, went on our first date um i think that um, you uh, balance me really well. Uh, obviously, we have our misunderstandings um, from time to time, but I think that we have created kind of a bond that we're level-headed and, and that we can kind of uh, take a step back and see the other person's side. And, um, honestly, I love that you're willing to do something like this. This is uh, a really tough task when when you look at it, but uh, you've made it look really easy. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what are you most looking forward to at our wedding? It's finally here. I know. Um, like I mentioned, I think at the beginning is this is the first time that we're going to be in the same spot with all of our loved ones. So, or at least the ones that are local that can safely make it. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And I think just celebrating, you know, finally getting that time to celebrate with our friends and dancing. And of course, pizza is going to be great. Yeah. So excited about that. But I'll go a little further. I think what I'm really excited about in my marriage with you is just continuing on um, in this journey and hopefully having kids one day and seeing you in that role as we continue to. My lips are on fire, by the way. Like. <laughs> Um, so sorry if I'm like 
Oh, it's it's okay. As so you as you sit there, you're kind of sitting yeah. in, in the heat. It's like they they talk about holding yourself close to the fire. Well, we're in the fire, yeah, yeah. baby. Like we're we're there. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know, I thought of an interesting question for you, which is kind of going to put you on the spot. And sorry if you don't think it's fair, but um, thinking about kids, if you were to choose. If our, when our future child had the personality of one of your groomsmen, who would it be and why? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not to say that the other ones don't have that personality, but you know, you know the type of parent you might be. You know, I don't think that I can choose just one. Um, I think that I could probably take one thing from every person. Okay. Um, I'll start with Eric. Uh, I think that uh, <clears throat> Eric really has a drive to get what he wants and i'd love for my my child i think that i see that in you when you see something that you want you go and get it and so i'd love for, for our children to have Especially that kind of yeah, aspect <laughs> yeah um for tristan uh he he is um someone that is always looking at every person in the he wants to make sure every person's having a good time when we're going out. Uh, he wants to make sure every person's taken care of. Um, so I'd love for our children to have that. Uh, Michael, um, <laughs> Michael Mayer, I would love for um, our children to uh, just have the calm, confident nature that Michael Mayer has about him. Like I've never seen someone be so quiet on the surface, but um, just, the, the brain is always turning, he's super smart, and he always knows the right thing to say. Uh, Mike Burns, obviously, one of the funniest guys I know. I'd love for our children to have the humor of Mike Burns. Um, and then uh, Grant, Grant has this curiosity about him that I absolutely love. Um, obviously, even though we're brothers, we are two very different people. Um, uh, I'm a big sports guy. He loves to work on cars and he loves cars and computers and things like that. And so I'd love for our children <clears throat> to have the curiosity that Grant has with every single thing that he loves in his life. Well said. All right, we're down to the final one. And uh, this is the last dab. It's a uh, tradition on the show for us to uh, put a little extra on the last wing. Obviously, it's voluntary. You don't have to do it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is the uh, Hot Ones, the last dab, Apollo. Ladies first. See that you put a pretty healthy portion of your salt bundle in there with you, and uh, obviously it's another tradition for us to cheers the last one. So, uh, cheers! We don't die. So Natalia Finley, you've made it to the <laughs> mountaintop. You've summited the uh, Hot Ones Hill. Uh, why don't you uh, Why don't you tell me uh, how you're doing right now? I'm fine. It's fine. We're fine. Woo! And so uh, <laughs> again, uh, as a tradition on the show, we have this camera here. This camera here. Why don't you tell me what you got going on in your life right now? Woo! Other than a burning tongue. <laughs> We finally have our wedding celebration happening. Uh, How far May, are we away? May 8th. From this point, it's about a month out from when you're watching this, probably tomorrow. <laughs> um, no, just super excited and I'm happy to stand up there. Hopefully not less sweaty. Um, <laughs> you're right, breathing in just really yeah, makes yeah. it worse. Mm -hmm. um, just in front of our family and friends and uh, Hopefully not uh, crying too much, <laughs> but um, I'm excited and I'm happy we survived. Hopefully, what about you? Yeah, I I think that the the wedding has been a long time coming. Obviously, we postponed twice, and I'm just really excited to party, have a good time, yeah. dance, see the people that we love, play some good music. Have everybody watch this and laugh their butts off because we are literally a sweating, dripping mess right now. 
And uh, yeah, I hope everybody enjoys. We love you. <laughs> Thank you guys. Bye. Have a kiss. Oh man. <laughs> oh. want we could do uh like the ending where they're like yeah in front of the table we can just pull the table out you want to do it with the fan